Hello and welcome back to my channel. In this video I'm making a relatively simple card using the Lawn Fawn Magic Iris camera add-on and the camera pull tab add-on. So these are separate sets and the first set has the camera body, little decorative pieces to dress it up, and then um, the pull tab that you would use to operate the magic iris. We won't be using that portion. And then the pull tab add-on actually gives you the little photo frame, camera lens, and um, the extra mechanisms for uh, augmenting the pull tab. And you do need the Lawn Fawn Let's Toast pull tab die set, which is separate. I don't have that, but I have something really similar. And I think in terms of structure and mechanics, they operate the same way. So um, you'll be able to, I think, follow this video even if you um, do have the Let's Toast mechanism. So here I've already done, uh, I hopefully think, all of the die cutting that I'll need. And so I'll start to put things together. So first, let's start with our camera. This is the camera body. There's one die that cuts all of that. However, that slot, you'll need that um, slot from the um, photo frame die set. Now, the photo frame die set does have a shorter and a longer slot. The shorter one is the one that you'll want on your camera. And um, my recommendation is if you're going to do a two-tone camera like I am, go ahead and glue down your accent layer first and then cut through uh, both layers with that slot just to make sure they really match up. I did it separately, separately just to show you that you can do this two-tone style camera um, by die cutting twice and um, layering up those pieces. So um, because there is a circle aperture on the original camera body, that's where the iris would normally go. Uh, the pull tab uh, photo frame does come with a camera lens so that you can cover up that aperture because our photo frame is gonna sit right behind there. So we wanna cover that up until they pull it up. So. I'm going to just finish decorating my camera here and I'm going with rather um, kind of dark tones. This this card is actually going to my stepfather-in-law and so I want to keep everything um, kind of in a color palette that I, I think he might like. So on the back here to attach my aperture, I'm just going to use some plain old scotch tape. So um, you won't see any of this, so it doesn't. You don't have to use anything fancy. Uh, whatever you have, washi tape, scotch tape. The point is that um, one, I want to adhere the the lens cap to uh, the camera, but then two, I also want to make sure that I don't have any catch points when my photo gets pulled in and out. So um, here, I'm gonna start to put. Um, my actual pull tab mechanism together. So you've got this long, and it's longer than it really needs to be, which is nice because then you can use this for a slimline card, which is why I have this set, and um, just cut that down. You have a nice decorative piece that has the arrow, which is a really nice clue to the card recipient that they should pull this for a special surprise. And um, you even have, you can even use the arrow that drops out of that so that you can even um, cut that out a second time out of a um, different color if you wanted and then inlay that back in. So I've already used one of the slot piece dies um, to cut the slot out of my paper, but I've also got um, a couple more pieces that you'll see come together as I assemble this. So you just want to fold the bottom um, kind of accordion style so that you can bring those two half circles together. So pinch that and, and slip that through your slot. And um, essentially that's what's going to hold this pull tab in place. But we want to stabilize that a little bit and so that's what the circle die cut is. So you just want to put glue on the two halves and then place your circle right over that. So now everything is a little bit more stable. It's all one piece that um, isn't gonna slide back through your slot on the other side. So that's well attached now. Now the next thing we wanna do, which will also add some additional stability, is there was a little die that cuts a belly band. 
and you would to just fold um, along the score lines, which the die does make for you. And um, that's just going to wrap right around your pull tab. And what that's going to achieve is it's going to create a channel that your um, pull tab will slide through which will ensure that it goes straight up and down. And that's why I'm taking a little bit of time to line this up against my mat. Um, so I know that that top of the pull tab is 45 degrees. And so if I line that up with a corner on my grid, then I'll know that's, that's essentially going to uh, ensure that it's straight up and down. So I'll put a little bit of glue on uh, the backside and I'm going to... Um, really make sure everything is even centered and wrap this around my pull tab and glue it down to what is really a um, matte layer that will go on top of my card. Um, now, the one thing that I think might be a little bit different between my version of the pull tab and the lawn fawn one is the lawn fawn one might be um, sized specifically so that it works with uh, their dies, of course. And so you may need to make some adjustments if you're using a different set. And I think there are several different sets on the market. I'm, I've decided that I actually want to move my um, belly band kind of stabilizer piece up a little bit because my slot is rather long, but that's kind of what I want. I want uh, this pull tab to travel as far as it possibly can. So I'm moving my belly band up so that um, it doesn't block quite as much of um, the slot as it did before. It's not a huge difference, but I'm going to take every every millimeter I can because then that means I can uh, really maximize how much of the photo frame is shown. Uh, because you won't see the full photo frame, it's not going to pull up out um, completely. And because I use liquid glue, I do have some glue in that slot. And I really want to make sure that nothing gums up the works. So it's a bit of added insurance. I'm going to just take some powder and you can use an anti-static powder bag or baby powder, which is what I have here, or cornstarch, whatever, whatever you prefer. And I'm going to just generously apply that to the back and front. And if you do have anything that's tacky or sticky, that's going to, um, it'll grab onto the powder. And so, so they'll smooth everything out. And even if you didn't have anything tacky, just the powder, uh, on the two layers of cardstock will help it, um, reduce a little bit of friction and help it glide a little bit more easily. So here's uh, the first matte layer for my card. And this camera is really nice because it does take up nearly an entire USA2 card front. So my card base is four and a quarter by five and a half. And this first brown matte layer is four and one eighth by five and three eighths. So I've just got a very, very thin white border, which I'm preferring these days, uh, the thinner border. So, um, so I'm really liking that look. But if I made it uh, that border any wider, you, you probably wouldn't see much of the brown at all. <laughs> so my photo frame, the photo frame here measures two and one eighth by just shy of three and a half. And all I've done is just taken some colored cardstock and uh, glue, and it's just a piece of scrap. Uh, I just want to cover the background so that I can build up my photo. Um, on top of that piece. So here, um, I'm going to put some foam uh, behind my the layer that has my mechanism. And that just gives a little bit of room for my uh, pull tab to glide, um, just so that there's no friction. Um, and now I can cut my pull tab down to size. So I snipped it off, and I'm just going to wrap that accent piece right over top of there. And you can see that gives me the little arrow, which is um, the clue to the card recipient that they should pull. And this, uh, this is going to end up being larger than what will fit into a standard US A2 size envelope because 
I really did want to maximize everything. And so rather than creating a unit that can fit entirely on a USA 2 card front um, with that little pull tab included, I'm uh, going to just make a custom size envelope and, um, and have that uh, pull tab just stick right off the, of the card. <laughs> so you can, on this piece, put essentially foam, or if you're not using foam, just adhesive, um, just really anywhere you want. Just don't put it too close to your mechanism because you don't want anything interfering with the motion. Um, our photo frame is actually going to be attached to the front side, so you don't have to worry about making room for your photo frame. And I was rather generous with my foam just so that I can have this piece be uh, really level and, and secure because it, it does hold our mechanism. So um, I don't want it to um, feel like it's um, not solid. All right, so you can see how large that camera is and just how much space it, it really takes up on a, on a small note card size like this. So I'm attempting to do a little bit of a preview and I'm using Tombow uh, removable or repositionable uh, tape runner. And it really just wasn't tacky enough to hold my um, photo frame down. What I'm trying to do is just a little bit of a dry fit so that I can see how much of the photo frame I can pull up out of the camera. That way, when I go to decorate my photo, I I know just how much space I have to work with. Um, it's not working out too well because that, that Tombow removable adhesive is meant to be removable. So, so it's just not holding, holding my photo frame down, even though I'm trying to press really hard. Um, so instead, I'll just rub that off and use a little bit of low tech tape. This is just painter's tape. And, um, and so once I do that, it, it works a lot better. So there, there that is. So, um, I would definitely recommend taking a little bit of extra time to to do this just so that you can um, really make sure that you, um, whatever you're designing to go uh, on your photo frame, that it really, you know, you know the limits to where um, you can place anything decorative. And um, because you can see that even here are my little pencil marks. So you can see I lose about a quarter of an inch or so off the bottom there. So um, I just want to make sure I don't put anything important there. I just got this tonic set. It's actually one of their, um, it's a decorative add-on set to their three-tiered pull-up. It's a huge die set, 30 pieces, and um, Craft Stash had a 50% off tonic sale. So I picked that up even though I don't have the base <laughs> to make the three-tiered pull-up, but I'll figure out how to do that and maybe make a separate video on that. But I'm really just using it for the decorative pieces. Okay, so here I'm going to put a little bit of foam on uh, the back of my camera. And here you do want to make sure that you have, that you leave room for your photo frame because that's where your frame is going to sit. And, um, and you want to make sure that you're well clear of the frame so that nothing, nothing, um, can potentially get in the way of the motion of that frame getting pulled up and down. And, um, I'm just going to put a simple uh, message here, happy 76th, and uh, I think the having numbered die sets like this are a really fun way to customize a card because, you know, in the stores you'll find milestone birthdays, but you're not going to find 76th, <laughs> so, um, so I think it's kind of nice to to get something a little special. I'm just using a regular half inch glue dot to adhere this, but um, you could definitely definitely use liquid adhesive, I think, that would hold up um, as well. And I'm gonna slot this in again, just to make sure that as uh, this gets attached to my page, everything is um, where I want it. And you wanna make sure that at the lowest position on the pull tab that 
some of your photo frame is threaded through that slot on your camera because if it goes down entirely when you pull it up, that slot is um, potentially a catch point and there's no guarantee that it's going to um, 100% of the time thread itself <laughs> correctly through. But if you leave it so that some of it's peeking through, it will always um, come out through that slot. So um, once I've got that positioned where I want it, I'm gonna straighten it, make sure to burnish it really well, and um, and then I can put my adhere my camera down onto my page, and then we'll pretty much have a complete card. So um, again, make sure to thread that through, and. I only took adhesive off uh, the paper liner off of um, one side uh, so that I could tack that down, get it in place, and then I peeled off the liner on the other side. It just makes it a little bit easier so that I have something to hold on to. So here's our finished card. Um, you can pull up and you get happy 76. And you could have put maybe um, the card recipient's name there. You could put an actual photo if you wanted. So lots of really fun ways um, you can decorate. Um, but I went for simple this time. <laughs> Thank you so much for joining me. And if you like this video, please do consider liking, commenting, sharing, and subscribing to my channel so you can um, see future videos as I release them. Thank you again, and until my next video, happy crafting and have a fantastic day. Bye!